In this presentation, we will set up vendors and their beginning balances. In other words, vendors are people that we owe, people that we purchase from, and then owe money to, and the supporting account related to them is accounts payable. So we're going to have to set up the accounts payable account, the vendor that we owe that relates to that accounts payable account, and the amount that we owe to those vendors. Let's zoom into it with zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars Company dashboard. Let's open up the balance sheet first by going to the accounting drop down and down to the good old balance sheet report, our favorite report. Once that opens up, I'm going to go ahead and right click on the tab up top and go ahead and duplicate that. So I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it. Here's what we have so far. We've got our two accounts, the inventory and the accounts receivable. We're going to be moving on down to the balance sheet here. So we're going, we didn't do cash yet. We'll get back to cash, but don't worry, we'll get back to it. But we've done the accounts receivable. We've done the inventory. Now we're going to be bouncing down or jumping down to the accounts payable. Looking at the accounts payable, it's going to be similar to the receivable. So we're going to put those two together because like the receivable, the payable will have a supporting uh, account or supporting ledger in other words if you think about the story behind the payable you got the payable how much people owe you, how much money you owe to others the vendors and then you need the supporting information who which vendors do you owe and so we want to list out the vendors that we owe so we got to do a couple things here we have an objective of one getting this 15,000 on the books but we can't just journalize the 15,000 on the books because we need to also support it by who we owe. Therefore, the objective number two, enter our normal vendors or our vendors into the system and then the opening balances for them. So note that as you start a new company, it's usually often the case that the receivables might be the most important thing. You want to get your customers in there and make sure you have the contact information for the customers for sure. And then the vendors, it, it kind of depends on the on the type of industry you have. I mean, if most of your vendors are normal kind of uh, just vendors that you pay, like a phone company, utility company, and so on and so forth, you may not be as concerned with the vendor information and you might just you know make the vendors or create the vendors as you pay them. However, if you have large vendors that you purchase from, such as like inventory from, as in our example, guitars, we purchase our guitars from a few large vendors, then we probably wanna enter that information into the system. And if there's any balance that is owed as of the time that we start the system, we have to enter those beginning balances as well. We'll do that in two separate steps. We're gonna be entering the vendors and then we'll go in and enter the opening balances with a form. Uh, such as a bill. All right, back to our financials. Let's go on back to the first tab over here. We're going to be going to the contacts. Let's go to the contacts drop down. I'm going to go to the all contacts this time. Now we could th go through a similar process of basically importing the vendors, but we're not. We're going to just add a vendor this time because we're only, we're only going to say that we have one that we owe money to. Now note, like the customers, you can add vendors as you enter a bill or something like that as you enter a form as well. But we're going to go here and add the vendor in this format. So I'm going to go ahead and say add. We're going to be adding a contact information. Notice once again that we're kind of at the top level saying, hey, this is a contact. I'm not really defining it as a vendor. I'm just saying it's a contact, similar information for the contact, whether it be a customer or a vendor. And then when we use that, that customer or contact in a certain fashion as like we're going to use this one as like a vendor that we're paying money out to, then it'll basically be someone that that's, falls into the category of in essence a vendor. So this is going to be Epiphone. Uh, we buy and sell guitars and Epiphone is one of our major vendors that we buy and sell guitars from. Just note that you would have some other tabs in here that you would want to populate. The contact name is the only name that's necessary in order to create the bill and the payable to make sure that you have that payable subsidiary account. Uh, if we needed this other information, we would want it. We would want it for our major vendors. So the primary person in contact, the email, phone, mobile phone. We went through all these in the customer, so I'll go through them quickly. We got the website the postal address uh, and then the postal address uh, for, for shipping the street address the financial details sales settings purchase settings sales discount batch payments uh, invoice theme and so on and so forth so again all we're going to do is the basic information to support and give a backing information for the accounts payable that we will be setting up also note there's no beginning balance to enter into here that's different than if you're using quickbooks you might be used to setting up with that beginning or opening balance but it's probably better that you don't that you actually use the forms or use some kind of journal entry to enter the beginning balance because then you understand where the other side is going rather than quickbooks kind of just forcing it to go somewhere so there's pros and cons of uh, you know the two systems so i'm going to go ahead and say save and so there we have it so our contact is now set up so if i go back to the contacts then if i look at all the contacts 
we then have four for all contacts, customers only three because we didn't really differentiate, you'll note, between the customer or the vendor, but we haven't entered any invoices for uh, this individual Epiphone or this company and therefore it's not included in the customers. Now let's go and add a bill uh, for them so that we can add the payable. So now we're gonna go to the second kind of step that we need. If I go back to the balance sheet, we wanna create a liability down here for accounts payable that will then be supported by a sub uh, ledger by who we owe and that would be the vendor of Epiphone. So let's go back over here. We'll do the same thing by the way. We're gonna enter in essence a bill we will enter a bill, uh, not really in essence, an actual bill, <laughs> and then, but and that'll affect the accounts payable. Will go up. The other side's going to go to the income statement. But like with when we enter the invoice, we're okay with it going to the income statement as long as we do it in the prior time period. So we want to do it in 2019, so that when we start the current time period, we want to put into this accounting software 2020. It will roll over into equity. So we're going to go back to the prior tab. We're going to then uh, go to the plus item and we're going to add a bill. So let's open up a bill. We're going to put in here, it's an Epiphone, Epiphone. So we'll type that in. The date is going to be the prior period. So it's going to be as of December 31st, 2019. And I'm not going to put any reference. The I'm just going to put this as the beginning balance. So I'm not putting the actual bill that was in there. We'd have to look in the prior system for that but we still need to pay it off. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add just kind of a generic bill into the system. Quantity I'm gonna say is one and the full amount was for the 15,000. So 15,000 there. So there we have that. And then the expense account, we have to put it somewhere. You could try to just simply put it to equity if you wanted to, cause it's rolling into retained earnings anyways. But uh, you might just put it to something like miscellaneous uh, expense because again we don't care where the expense is because it's going to roll over we're not looking at the income statement for 2019 we just want the retained earnings to be correct starting in 2020 and all income statement accounts to be zeroed out at that time so we're going to say approve and let's take a look at what will happen what's it going to look like so that is and there's an error with it error occurred during the following the due date cannot be empty so let's put in a due date here because apparently uh, the due date can't be empty so I'm going to say the due date is going to be January 2020. Now note, this is the date that it's going to be recorded. The fact that it's not due until January, even though that's in 2020, the current date we're working with, that's okay. No financial transaction will happen. Then the transaction will happen as of December 31st, 2019. Let's see if that'll do it. Let's go ahead and approve. See if it uh, will accept those terms. It will. That's exciting. So now I'm going to go back to the second tab where we have our balance sheet. Let's go ahead and update the balance sheet and see if our uh, accounts payable then appears on it. So there's our accounts payable. There's the 15,000 appears there. That's great. That's going to be the actual bill. Obviously, if we go into that and take a look at what is included as we construct this thing, if we, if we drill down on it, then we should see our uh, payable. So there's there's the payable. They call it a payable invoice. I don't know why they wouldn't call it a bill, but a payable invoice is going to be the bill. Don't mistake that with an, an invoice. And then if you go back into the payable invoice, you get to uh, uh, the amount here that we just entered, which here is called, in essence, a bill. So it's really a bill that's going to appear with the name of that payable invoice uh, in, in the transaction detail. All right, so where did the other side go? Because the accounts payable went up. What happened to the other side must have gone somewhere because like two things happen all the time when you have the double entry accounting system and only one thing happened or one thing that we're looking at here is the accounts payable. Well, the other side went to equity in essence, but once again, it's in that uh, current year information. I believe it's going to show up in that current year information. So let's look at the income statement and just see what's happening. Let's get an idea of what's going on here. We're going to go to the accounting, back to the first tab, accounting drop down. Let's open up that income statement. So here's the income statement. If I make it for last year, so we're going to make it uh, last financial year and update. We then have uh, the miscellaneous expense. There it is, that 15,000 miscellaneous expense. And we had the sales that we entered and this expense that adds up to the, the or subtracts out to the 5,500. If we go then back to the balance sheet, then we see that 5,500. So that's fine, but then if I go to the current year where I want to be working, I'm going to say I don't care what really happens in 2019 here as long as I'm good going forward 2020. That's where the cutoff is. That's what matters. So I'm going to go up to January 2020, and that all rolls into retained earnings then as we would expect. So that looks fine. Let's go to the income statement. I, won't, I don't want anything on the income statement yet as of 2020. That's the point. 
So let's go up to 2020 and see if there's anything in the income statement for 2020. So I'll just go to like February 2020 and um, it's still in 2019 for some reason. Let's go to 2020. All right. So there we go. January through March. Nothing's in the income statement. That's the point. I want it nice and clean because we haven't entered anything in yet. So, so, we're, so everything looks good there. I'm going to right click and duplicate this tab. Then I'm going to go back to the balance sheet. I also want supporting information for this receivable in terms of who we owe. So if the boss asks us as a bookkeeper or whatever, or the accounting department has said, how much money do we owe other people, vendors, 15,000? Well, who do we owe? Okay, well, for that, we need to go to another report over here. And we would go to the accounting drop down. Let's open up our reports and we want to go to some report that's going to be breaking out the payables. Let's go to the purchases section and go down to the aged payable uh, summary report. Aged payable summary report. And that should break out uh, the 15,000 by who we owe. We only have one individual here, that being Epiphone. So who do we owe? Epiphone. So Epiphone, we owe that 15,000. That's going to be the bill information there. If we go back then to the dashboard, and scroll down through the dashboard we also are going to have information invoices owed to you and bills you need to pay so now we have of course the bill you need to pay as well that will be tracking that information so we have the awaiting payment bill here and so that's another way you can kind of get into this and it'll be the same kind of thing uh, as if we had entered the bill into the current system we entered the bill in the prior system we can pay it off in a similar fashion and just mark it off and then push forward with the current data in 2020 and going forward.